In this video, we're going to take a quick look at dividing by a radical and doing something called rationalizing the denominator. So let's take a look at um, an example of a fraction that involves a radical, 1 divided by the square root of 3. Now one of our rules for simplifying a radical is that this isn't simplified because there is a radical in the denominator of this fraction. So we need to do something to get rid of that radical that's in the denominator. And we're going to use something, uh, it's kind of a pattern that works out about radicals. So if you take, let's say, radical 2 times radical 2, what do you get? You get square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. If you took square root of 8 times square root of 8, you'd get square root of 64, and the square root of 64 is just 8. If you took square root of x times square root of x, you'd get square root of x squared, and that is just x. Essentially, any time you multiply a radical by itself, you are just left with whatever was under the radical. We want to get rid of this radical in the denominator, and using this pattern, we're going to be able to get this to be just a plain 3. What we need to do is multiply the denominator by radical 3, but anything you multiply to the denominator, you also have to multiply by the numerator. So we're going to do that top and bottom of this fraction. 1 times the square root of 3 is just square root of 3, and square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3. Now you might be wondering if we can reduce this at all because we have 3 over 3, but this is inside a radical and this is not inside a radical, so this can't be reduced any further, and that would be considered simplified form. Sometimes you'll need to simplify um, a little more afterwards, so let's take an example like 6 uh, radical 2 over radical 3. Let's see what this simplifies to you. We want to get rid of this radical that's in the denominator. So multiplying by radical 3 and radical 3, that's going to clear out that radical in the bottom. So what we get, radical 3 times radical 3, that's just plain 3. Here we have 6 times radical 2 times 3 is 6. And we can go a little further with this because in this fraction now, I have a 6 over 3. Those are both outside of a radical, so I can reduce that. Think about that fraction, 6 over 3. 3 goes into both of those numbers evenly, so that would simplify to 2 radical 6 over 1, or just plain 2 radical 6. Last thing you'd want to check or make sure you can't simplify this any further, but no perfect squares go into 6, so that is as simple as that one gets. Let's take a look at when you have a fraction inside of a radical. So let's say we had the radical of 4 fifths. Well, just like we saw with multiplication going on in a radical, you can split that up into two. It works the same for division. When you have a fraction under a radical, what you can do is split that up as two different radicals being divided. So radical 4 over 5 is exactly the same thing as radical 4 over radical 5. Now, I'm going to see that we already have a, square, uh, a perfect square here, so we might as well take the square root of 4 and get 2 there. So we have 2 over square root of 5. Now we want to get rid of that radical in the denominator. That's a square root of 5. We need to multiply it by itself. But to keep it balanced, do it to the top 2. So across the top, we have 2 radical 5. In the denominator, we have 5. So we have 2 radical 5 over 5. The 2 over 5 cannot be reduced anymore. And there are no perfect squares that go into 5, so that is completely simplified.